Here's your Money Briefing for Tuesday, June 13th. I'm J.R. Whalen for The Wall Street Journal. Millions of people place bets on online sports gambling sites every year, and the IRS wants to know about those bets. Wall Street Journal tax reporter Laura Saunders joins us with what sports gamblers should know about paying taxes on their winnings. So, Laura, first of all, how does the IRS find out about someone's wins and losses from sports betting sites? Well, when you're gambling online, you're making those sports bets, there's a record of every one of them at the companies. This is the great thing about online and digital activities. The companies are keeping records. When you go onto your phone and you make a parlay or a prop bet or something like that, that's all in the company's computer's memory. And then that gets reported to the IRS? Well, it doesn't always get reported to the IRS. They're different thresholds for different kinds of gambling activity. Now, with a lot of those sports bets, the threshold is really high. The win will be reported if the odds were 300 to 1 or greater, and the winning is more than $600. So that's a pretty high threshold. So how are the winnings taxed, and how would somebody report them on their tax return? Let's talk about how it works for casual gamblers. It means people who are not professional gamblers. If you're a normal, ordinary gambler, your winnings are taxed as ordinary income, at ordinary income rates, like wages. However, when it goes on your tax return, it goes on line 8B of Schedule 1 as gambling income, gambling winnings. But not everybody wins on every bet. How do their losses fit into this equation? Well, this is really important because gambling winnings are ordinary income on one part of the return, but gambling losses can only be deducted as an itemized deduction on Schedule A. This is where you deduct mortgage interest and medical expenses and state and local taxes. There's also a place to put in gambling losses. Let's say you have $7,000 of winnings and $7,200 of losses then $7,000 of your losses would be deductible against your winnings, assuming that you itemize and can do this. But there's a real catch here, JR, and it is that since the tax overhaul of 2017, very few people have itemized their deductions. The people who itemize have gone from about a third of taxpayers to probably less than 10%. So what that means is that if you're gambling online, Doing sports betting, you could be in a position where all of your winnings are taxable, but your losses are not deductible. And does that have to do with the standard deduction being raised? Yes, it does. In 2017, the tax overhaul about doubled the standard deduction so that for this year, it's over $13,000. Now, you take a young gambler, a male in his 20s or something like that, he probably doesn't have a mortgage, he doesn't have anything much but his gambling losses. And so he'll take the standard deduction, but he won't get a specific break for his losses in that case while his winnings are still taxable. You know, we talk about tax returns in the IRS and things get really complicated. Why wouldn't somebody just subtract their losses from their winnings and then just report that number? Well, they'd like to be able to, but that's not what the law says, we think. (laughs) The the IRS says that's not what the law says. There are some professionals that think you could do that if you have sessions. This is like, say, if you walked into Las Vegas and you played slots for five hours and you could look at the amount at the beginning and the amount at the end and take the losses away from the winnings. There are some professionals that think you should be able to do that with online sports bets and that a judge would agree with you. But the IRS doesn't agree with you, and you might get into a fight with them before you get to court. All right. Well, that leads me to the next question. Is this the sort of thing that could raise a red flag at the IRS and result in an audit? Well, yes. First, they'd have to hear about it, you know, if you had a great big hit or something like that. The other thing is that revenue agents know that people gamble. So that if they're doing a regular audit and they see something like a deduction for a business trip to Las Vegas, they will raise the gambling question. So they're very alert to that. Let's talk for a moment about people who bet at casinos. A lot of times people's winnings include just exchanging chips for cash. Then they walk away from the cash window and they're done. Is the IRS interested in those winnings also? 
Yes, it is. And it's the same rules, basically, as for online sports betting. And what happens is that you're supposed to put your winnings on one part of the return, your losses on another, unless you're a professional, which most people aren't. But again, those things aren't necessarily reported to the IRS unless they're over a certain amount. For slot machines, it's 1200 And blackjack and poker and craps, they all have different thresholds. Those are easily available on the IRS website. But we've had this explosion of betting since it was legalized around the country. And it's not just people in their 20s who are doing this. It's college students. Do they know what they're up against? I think they don't. And I bet their parents don't know either. Now, maybe this is a little bit like household help. Most people don't pay attention to the law. But there's a slice of people that need to be very concerned if their children are doing sports betting and the child is a dependent, like a college student. Then the child probably needs to file a return. The gambling winnings are taxable as ordinary income. The losses are probably not deductible. There's no standard deduction. It gets really complicated really fast. And there's some questions we don't even know the answer to, like whether those winnings are subject to the kitty tax. That's when it income is taxed at the parent's rate. But it is an important thing for parents to be aware of if their children are doing online sports betting. So with all the betting going on below the threshold you talked about that the IRS wants to know about, there's a lot of honor system stuff going on here, isn't there? Yes, there absolutely is. (laughs) And so how does that work? Well, I think the best advice that I heard from the professionals is to keep a very, very good record of your wins and losses. The IRS knows that most people who are betting or gambling are losing more than they win. And so if you can show the IRS that you lost more than you won, you may not have a problem with all this in an audit, but you need to have the records and many people don't do that. Now, you've spoken to CPAs and tax advisors about this. What do they tell their clients who do a lot of betting? I did talk to a CPA at a firm that handles a lot of returns for online sports bettors and other gamblers and are very familiar with this. And when he talks to his clients and he explains the rules, he says they're really surprised. They say, is this worth it? Because it seems like everybody wins, the companies, the IRS, the states, everybody wins except the gambler himself. Well, that's been the formula for 100 years, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, and longer, maybe, maybe much longer. That's Wall Street Journal tax reporter Laura Saunders. And that's your Money Briefing. I'm J.R. Whalen for The Wall Street Journal.